G'day everyone and welcome back to Meatball Garage. This video is all about cooling. You're gonna get my top tips for troubleshooting overheating issues in these old dinosaurs like that. But first, let me show you how I keep my Clevo powered XW cool like a Melbourne summer's day. This is my radiator. It is, aha, it is a crossflow. It is from an XF or an XB or an XC or something like that, but it's definitely not the standard ones that came in the XWXYs. They were the up downs. This is a cross flow. It is a three core uh, and it does the job pretty good when it's been cleaned. Because this wasn't the standard radiator that came in this car, uh, the battery tray has had to be rearranged a little bit and a few things have had to be cut out for it to fit. But that's how the car came and that's how I've lived with it since. To cool the radiator, I have fitted it with this, what a reveal that was on the chair. This is a single thermo out of an FG or a BF Falcon or a Territory. It's about 17 and a half inches, I think. So it's bigger than those spiral fans you get, like those top of the line 16 inch ones. And it's fully shrouded. The shroud with a bit of massaging has fit this really, really well and it works great and it is nice and quiet. This thing is hooked up to a fan controller. It's not very flash fan controller. I think it's off a Bluebird or something. It goes on at 90 degrees Celsius and off at 85 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much bang on for operating temperature in these 351 Clevelands. I've always run proper Cleveland style thermostats in that car. This is what's just come out of it. It's a Trident and it was a 170. What's going in it? It's this thing, it's a, an original style one, a copy of the old Robert Shaw one. This is a track boss one, and it is a 160 degree one. I've never used a, a style like this before, and I'm keen to try it out and see what it's like. If you wanna know more about Cleveland thermostats, check out my other video about Cleveland thermostats. Because thermo fans pull a little bit of power, I've had to upgrade my alternator. So this is a Bosch 85 amp unit, which fits right in like a glove. And that means that I can drive around at night time and when the thermo fan kicks in, my headlights don't turn into candles. And finally, a part of my cooling system is the water pump, of course. It's a faux cooler job. It is an aluminium part, so it's super light. And if you have a look at these pictures here, it is so much nicer inside than the standard job that uh, replaced it. They are really, really good. They cost an absolute fortune and it hasn't let me down just yet. So with this end-to-end -end cooling setup, this car just runs between that range that the thermo fan operates at. So the highest it'll see is probably 195, maybe 200 at a pinch, but the thermo fan brings it right back down to 185 or you know between 90 and 85 degrees, which for Cleveland I've heard is absolutely perfect. So look, I've cooked a car before. I haven't cooked this one, but I cooked the old boy's Mustang and uh, I'll give you the big tip. That, um, that was a shit day out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't want to do that again. So I've been, uh, helping on making sure that I never ever ever get in a position where I overhate this thing Especially taking around mates or even now taking around family with my young fella in it So if you've got a car like this or you've bought a muscle car or a classic car That's got an unknown condition cooling system and you are getting hot These are the steps I would take to try and solve your overheating issues So first things first, are you actually overheating? Now if you're pissing out steam from your radiator, uh, yeah, you are overheating. But if your gauge is telling you you're hot, but your car doesn't seem hot and it's running okay, then maybe you need to verify that it's actually running hot. And what I'd do is go out and get just a cheapo mechanical temp gauge like I've got here. This one came from Summit Racing and it did a good job. And it went, went in the car for ages. Stick it in a port in your car and see what it does. You might actually be running just fine. It's just that you might have a shit gauge. The next thing I'd do would be go get your old copper radiator or brass radiator cleaned out. And I'm not talking about a, a bullshit flush that you pour in here and you run it and you dump all the crap out. No, no, I'm talking about go to a radiator shop, they undo all the bits, they take the tanks off and they run rods through the cores and they get out all the gunk that's in your block and i tell you now your block will be full of gunk have a look at this on my 302 that's the water jacket that stuff there is going to be coming loose over time and clogging up your radiator when i first got this car i had it cleaned out and my gosh did it run cooler almost immediately just from addressing that whilst i was still running the mechanical fan hey when you go to the radiator shop to get your radiator cleaned out before you do that actually ask the bloke there if he thinks that your radiator's big enough to do the job and what i mean by that is you might just have an undersized radiator a lot of times cars are modified over time more power bigger this bigger that 
that generates more heat and people a lot of the time will just not upgrade their radiators for it. Whilst you've got the radiator out, pull your thermostat out as well and chuck a new one in. But what these things are worth and how much uh, pain it is getting a tow truck home or uh, being stranded somewhere with a wife and child when it's 39 degrees, just spend the money on a new thermostat. It's a cheap way to, get, to at least guarantee that that part's working properly. And if you want, when you get the new one, chuck it in a pot of water, make sure it opens up fully. Because if that's knackered and failed, then you, you basically got a blocked radiator. You're not getting any water through your water jackets and your radiator. So go and do that. And if you're running a Cleveland, just run the proper bloody Cleveland style one. I mean, come on, they're not that much more expensive than the Windsor ones that you shouldn't be running in there anyway. It just means when you're using a Cleveland style thermostat, you are getting all of the water pushing through to your radiator when it's open. Another good thing to do whilst your radiator is out is make sure that you've got a shroud on your fan. Now, a lot of cars from this era, guys just throw them together and they've got a radiator and a big mechanical fan there, but no shroud. Here's the old boys GT radiator and you can see the mechanical fan and the big fuck off shroud that is encasing it. That makes sure that all the air is drawn through the radiator and not being drawn through the sides here. So let's say you've done all of those steps, yet you're still having issues. The next thing I'll be pointing at is that thing there, the water pump. So there is a chance that your water pump could be cactus. The first thing to, uh, I suppose, verify if your water pump's cactus or not is to see if there's flow actually going through your radiator. And the way you can do that is you start the car with your cap off. Let it get up to temperature. Once the thermostat's open, you'll see in here the actual water flow from one end to the other or up or down or wherever the case may be. If you give your car a rev, you might actually see the volume of water um, really increase as the water pump impeller spins faster. If that's happening, then it's probably not your water pump. But if you're not seeing any flow, it's probably your water pump. So water pumps can fail and here's a couple of water pumps I've prepared earlier. This one here is from the Clevo I'm pulling apart, that one there. And this one was from the car that's behind us that I pulled out to replace. And as you can see by the design of the impellers, this one's pretty crappy. <laughs> it's um, it's not looking flash either. And this one here's much, much better. I mean, you've got a very, very robust impeller that looks like it's in one piece. Whereas this one, I'd give it another 100,000 Ks before there's probably not much left in there. Depending on the water or the grade of coolant you put in, you might actually find that it just erodes the whole thing away. Your impeller sort of not existing anymore is one way that these things can fail. The other way is that the bearings can fuck up. Uh, so your you know, engine's spinning this bit here, uh, but your impeller's not spinning at all. If you're not getting that flow, go get yourself a brand new water pump, chuck it on. Again, I don't think these are super expensive compared to what an engine is worth, and again, to compared to what your sanity's worth. So you've gone through all of those DIY tips you can do at home, and your car's still running hot. What do you do next? Well, I reckon at this point, you're probably shit out of luck. And by that I mean, you're gonna have to take it to someone that knows what they're doing and not just listening to some vlog on YouTube. Because really, you could have something as simple as, maybe your car just needs a tune up. Cars that run poorly are inefficient. So if your mixtures are out of whack and your timing's wrong, you could be creating more heat than your car can cool uh, just by the car not running its best. You've all seen stories or heard of stories of your mates who have glowing you know, exhaust headers because they've got their timing too retarded. So imagine all that extra heat that your car has to remove from the engine bay because your car's running like shit. The other thing that could be going on is maybe you've got a problem inside your engine that you can't see. Well, you might be able to see if you're blowing white smoke out of the tailpipes, maybe you've got a blown head gasket or a crack in your bore or something like that. Or it could be something which I've seen a lot on engine forms. People actually put in their head gaskets on the wrong way when they build a motor. So if you put your head gasket on the wrong way, you could be blocking off some water passages between the block and the head. Yeah, it's gonna cause some issues. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point and one of the previous things we've discussed will actually help your issues. I reckon 99% of the time, just getting your radiator cleaned out, it's probably gonna solve it. Anyway, let's get to chucking my car back together. How unnecessary is this? <laughs> Oh, so I just button up the bottom hose and I'm going to try and fill the block as much as I can. And I'm going to use this stuff here. It's called Neulon Radiator Water. It's got no minerals or crap in it, so it should be good for whatever you want. How good's my funnel? Also, how good's my pouring? Now I'm going to mix this with actual Neulon coolant, which is green. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't want to fill it all the way up because uh, I need to put thermostat in still. Now, well, I've topped out a coolant. 
three litres of that. So now I've got to buy some more stuff in the morning. All right, you can chuck our thermostat in, like so. And I've just got our gasket here, which I've put a thin layer of Ultra Blue around. Whether you need Ultra Blue or not, don't know, but I always put Ultra Blue. And doesn't it just get everywhere? All right, we're done, we're buttoned up. A little bit of piss farting around, but one of the cleaner thermostat installs I've done. And I've got the old Razimataz paddy hose here, which will be ideal for our uh, filter. So this is how I'm gonna run the stocking. I've given myself that much length. Oh, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna bring it down here, because ultimately the water's gonna flow this way, and it's gonna sort of flow through the stocking here. Uh, there's gonna be plenty of room in the stocking for water to flow through, but there's also gonna be plenty of room for it to catch shit. So I might only run this for a few drives, just in case it does full, fill up, um, and we'll come back and see how much crap it's actually caught. I've also hooked back up my thermo fan wires too. If you're running a thermo fan, make sure you get nice thick wires as well. Um, I've melted some because the guys that put it in put in shit stuff. Right, we are on all hoses are go. Fresh coolant, fresh radiator water. We've topped her off enough in there. I've made somewhat of a mess and I was stupid and I thought I would Make sure that these radiator brackets are nice and tight, and that one now ceases to exist, so I don't know what these XF style brackets are worth, but I need a new one, or I'm just gonna drill it out and put a bolt through, which is the sensible thing to do. Anyway, let's crank this thing and bleed it. Starting procedure successful. Wait for it to get up to temperature. Now by filling it in a block, I'm actually hoping I don't need to add that much more when the thermostat opens, but we'll uh, just wait and see what happens, eh? Do you know what I forgot to do? Flush the bloody heater core out. Because the heater core is just like your radiator in the... It's, it's a little radiator, but a fan blows air through it and the other end of the uh, core, you get hot air through your car. And because it's like a radiator, it also collects shit. So even though I've had the radiator cleaned out, I've probably got crap through the heater core, but considering it's probably trapped in there, it shouldn't have that much of a bearing on the overall cooling system. But if you can, do your heater core too, flush it out. Or if you can take it out, take it out and get it clean. Because this is what mine sounded like a few years ago. when I had to take and, and rebuild the heater box, which was my first video. There we go. You can actually see the water flow through the veins. Now that the thermostat's over, I better top her up. kicked in, see the water gushing through the, the cores, bloody beautiful. This fan is so good that actually gets cold, like you can really, like that's hot to touch. But the actual radiator itself becomes cool to touch after about 30 seconds. It's really, really effective, this fan. Fantastic. Okay, it's just gone through one heat cycle. I've topped it off again, and now I've put the radiator cap back on. Now that I'm gonna let the system go through another heat cycle under pressure, and then check the radiator to make sure there's no leaks, uh, no leaks around the hoses, and no leaks where I installed the thermostat the other night. So let's just let it run, and hopefully it's all good. Then we can cruise. No, then we can fix the other problem, which is my stumble. But I might bleed the brakes before that. Plenty of jobs to do on the Falcon. Plenty of jobs you'll see here on Midbolt Garage. If you're liking this video, 
Give us a thumbs up. Please? Oh, right, we just have to open the workshop door. For the fumes. But, um, yeah, it's just looking good, folks. No leaks at the hoses. No leaks at the thermostat. Uh, where I've got it all sealed up. And, um, yeah, seems to be doing its job. There's nothing pissing out of the radiator. There's nothing coming out of that little corner down there. Where, uh, there was a little nick. Um, which I've got the guy to weld up and solder up for me, which is good. So all in all, I think we're home and hosed and I'm going to put on the road again and drive it, which is good. Yeehaw! Right, well I hope you enjoy that little run through my cooling system and you actually took something away that was useful from those tips about how to troubleshoot some cooling issues you might experience on a classic car. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up. If you found it anything else, leave me a comment. If you've got any other tips which you think are useful or if there's anything that I've said that may be wrong, <laughs> put it in the comments. People read these comments. Um, you get a lot of people troubleshooting in there. So um, make sure you pop it down in there. Uh, otherwise, see you later. I should really be gentle with this. This could be my number one fan. See what I did there? Ha <laughs> ha!